Hey guys, Sean Zim, The Connection Machine, aka The Insurance Doctor. We are doing our next episode of The Connection Conversation Show. A couple housekeeping. If you're popping on right now, it's hashtag live on the replay, hashtag replay. And you're going to sit back, enjoy for 15 minutes, learn. You're going to hopefully take some notes and then you're going to actually implement some of the ideas, the tips, the strategies we go over in our conversation. If things are working for you, come back, drop a comment in this video. And as always, don't forget to share this video. We want to help as many people as possible. Let me bring on my next guest, Robert Seaman. What's going on, man? How are you? Uh, doing well, Sean. How are you? I'm doing excellent. Thanks so much for joining us today and taking some out some time out of your busy day. I know you're you know hustling. You got you're an entrepreneur. So when you take time off, you're not losing money, but you could be making money at the same time. But this providing value will help you in the end. That's what I always I, I believe. So I appreciate you taking some time out. And uh, before we even get into it, Robert, who are you and what do you do? Well, first of all, I would say I consider this time on, right? Because your audience may be people that are all new to me. Um, so who am I? I am in my ninth year as a residential real estate agent. I do have my broker's license. I'm also a military veteran. Um, you know, I, I got, in, got into what I'm doing now based on the bad experiences that I had and really come from a place of wanting to educate and help people and provide that value, honestly. Uh, because there's a lot of small trip ups and mistakes you can make when buying a home and small solutions to big problems often, often make a big, big difference. And it's kind of like, well, if I knew then what I know now, right. And I'm like, wow, these people are really successful. You know, when I bought my house, I was still in the coast guard. I knew nothing. And the things that weren't explained to me clearly end up costing me a lot of money. And I just felt like, wow, you know, I can do better for others than what was done for me. Um, and that's kind of where I am. You know, I, I love you know, I love the, the process of putting people in a home. Because that's going to be a life changer for them. One way or another, whether it's equity, whether it's it's planting roots, it, you know, I, I think home, whatever it is, whether it's an apartment or a mansion. You know, that's the most important thing you have as a human being besides family. Well said, man. And I, I hear that a lot. A lot of people get into whatever they're doing because of the experience that they had and you want to make it better. And that's when you have firsthand experience and it was poor. Now you have something to live up to. And that's that gives it goes back to having a why. So that that's added in there as well. So before we get into hold on one second. <laughs> thank Robert for your service being on the Coast Guard how was that experience by the way well I mean almost seven years best seven years of my life um very stereotypical in a lot of ways I, I got to be stationed in Boston uh as many sailors do I met my amazing wife in a bar uh celebrated 14 years last night yep you know, I, I met some incredible people. The connections were super deep. Um, you know, honestly, if I could still be doing it, I probably would. Uh, I had a couple injuries and surgeries and stuff like that. Um, you know, it is. But, yeah, no, that was uh, – the Coast Guard's a different kind of service. Mm. You know, I love them all, each and every one of them. But my job was to try to save lives and help people, which was awesome. No, that's awesome, man. I appreciate that. And uh, we were talking before we went live about you're heavily into fishing. And I have some friends that I've had. Jason Wilk was on in the past, and he was a surf fisherman. He's always talking about casting it off the surf uh, down in in South Jersey, on, on the beaches of South Jersey. Talk about your love of fishing, please. Well, so originally I'm from central Pennsylvania. So my experience is totally different. I grew up fishing in like streams and ponds and mountains. Uh, so I've typically been a freshwater guy, though I, I made a couple connections. I'm looking forward to branching out. In fact, in a couple of weeks, I'll be going striper fishing on a boat, which will be awesome. Um, but for me now, it's just, you know, you get to go bright and early. 
well, actually almost dark and early rather <laughs> cup of coffee, fishing rod. And it's just quiet. You know, that I think as business people, especially like everyone tells you, you got to find your Zen time. You know, that time where you connect with yourself, connect with God, connect with whatever you connect with. And for me, when I'm out in the woods by water and there's nobody else bothering me, I'm that, that, that is definitely my happy place. And I just feel like that, you know, it's not even necessarily about the fishing per se. It's about the peace, the quiet and the time by yourself without too much noise in your brain. Here's a question. Do you answer this when it's called, when someone's calling you while you are, you have that out there? All right. So fun fact, I was fishing unexpectedly last week and I was on the phone with a client because it was an important client. And one of the rods I had started ripping. <laughs> it almost went in the lake. I caught the first carp I've ever caught. The thing had to weigh about seven pounds. It was huge. And I had to call. I was on the phone with my client. I said, listen, I, she's like, what are you doing? I'm like, uh, I, I, I'm, I'm fishing. I'm, I'm like, I'll call you right back. She's like, oh, my. She started laughing. I called her back. She's like, well, yeah, but it was so funny. But, yeah, if it's the right client or a client that I currently have that's active and you're a priority for me, which all my clients are, Absolutely. If it's a number I don't know, mm, I'm hoping they're going to either leave me a text or send me a voicemail. I have the same rule. Like, if you're not in my phone, if it doesn't come up, Robert Seaman, I'm not answering the phone. Like, it's just a very simple process for me. You're going, and people say, well, you have to answer your phone all the time. No, you don't. You, if someone, it's that important. I have, we have a lot of calls or, you know, um, the telemarketing calls and the marketing calls. And it's just something you can control and it's something that if they if it's that important they'll leave a voicemail or they'll text you or it's not worth your time so i agree with you and it's something that takes some time you gotta be careful when you're around the water dropping your phone can get costly as well so <laughs> that, yeah, yeah that definitely could be for sure now are you are you catching and then cooking or are you are a catch and release kind of guy so honestly it really depends um you know a lot of uh, Jersey water may not be the freshest in the world, <laughs> uh, but when it comes to early season trout season, I will, you know, if they're big enough, I will catch them and keep them. Um, Cause really that's why they're put in there. I mean, they're raised in a farm and they're put in water and they're not expected to stay there. Otherwise they wouldn't put in hundreds a year. Right. Right. Now that's cool. That's really cool. And then my next question goes hand in hand as far as either you're cooking them or not. Your love of food, right? Yep. What is something that you're into? You you went out to dinner. Is there something that you consistently have on a daily or do you like to try new things? Well, I mean, you want to talk about on the daily, it's like, you know, chicken and salad. <laughs> because, you know, the, the, the best and worst thing about being a cook is knowing you can make things that are insanely delicious that are not necessarily healthy <laughs> and you got to separate. It's like, okay, well, you know what? We'll put a different spice on that. We'll put a little of this or that, but you got to try to make sure like, listen, at least this chicken on my salad is cooked properly. So I'm not having a dry chicken salad for lunch, but we try to save it up. You know, like we'll cook a great meal once or twice a week. I'm a big Sunday night family meal kind of guy. Yeah. I like that. Yep. Like, you know, Spend a couple hours, make it right, do it well. Um, people always ask me, what's my favorite thing to cook? I don't have an answer. I don't. I love to cook so many different kinds of food. Um, you know, we we do a lot of like Tex-Mex type of stuff. But, you know, we, we try to make it taste good, but also be fairly healthy on the whole. And my wife and daughter are both lactose intolerant. So that's I find that actually exceptionally helpful. Changes the game and you got to know what you're doing so you don't want to affect your family. So, no, I definitely agree with you. And I like the having an, an experience with your family, you know, on a daily, you know, on a weekly basis. Everyone's, you know, turning off the phone, I'm hoping to, and, and just enjoying having conversation and good food. That's a key thing. So, I definitely agree with you. And that's great that you uh, are using, are you using recipes or are you? more of the fly by the seat of your pants kind of cook. 
It's a solid 50-50. It really depends what it is. It's want to make it yours. That's what it is. It's like, it's an art. It's an art. So you are playing with different spices and you're adding and, and taking things out and making it yours. So that's a beauty, beautiful part of it. Well, yeah, it's, it's like, it's like the perfect marriage of like precision and art because like for me, I love chopping vegetables. I know that might sound crazy to a lot of people, but like there's been times when I was so intense on it. I would actually have my wife get out like the ruler <laughs> And be like, dude, this is so consistent. Like, look how good my knife work is. Just because that's something like, for me, when I, that's like, I can totally zen in to chopping things. You take the pride. And it's, you're using as far as, it's like a, it's a hobby, but it's also a skill. You have your, you love fishing, you love cooking, and you love helping people. And that's what I want to lead into. And that goes hand in hand with your business as well. With being on the board of directors with, what was the, um, the company you're with? It's it's the Jersey Shore Dream Center out of Neptune. Um, yeah, so the, the motto of the Dream Center has always been find a need and fill it. We're a relatively small charity, sort of. Um, and, you know, one of the things that Monmouth County, New Jersey in general is blessed with is a lot of great charities. But there's always gaps. So one of the things we run that's that's really important is our baby pantry where people can come and get diapers. Like that's huge because the allowances that are made for mothers with kids, the diapers, the amounts are not enough. A kid does not need one diaper a day. Right. And if you don't have children, you don't know what I'm talking about. It's probably in the neighborhood of five to six diapers a day on a good day. That's Um, if, yeah, they're older, 10 on a normal, like a newborn. Right. Yeah. Um, but I, I got involved with them when the pandemic started and, you know, kind of when real estate, I mean, real estate didn't die, but no one wanted you in their house. Everyone was concerned. No one knew what to do, how to do whatever. So I started volunteering. We call it our food truck. Um, it's a cargo van that we deliver food from. And I just started volunteering and, you know, handing out groceries to the local community. And it was just an incredibly rewarding experience. And I just kept doing it, kept doing it, kept doing it. I saw some flaws within our own system of, of food that we had that we couldn't use. Like, for instance, I mean, Sean, if you didn't have a stove, what would you do with a five pound bag of rice? True. Right. Well, so I'm like, all right, we got that. And then, you know, we get all these random donations. We would have the huge restaurant sized cans of tomato sauce or this or that or all these other things. And I just thought to myself, I'm like, there's nothing we can't give these away. What do we do with it? So I ended up bringing them home with me and then getting some other things, you know, through donations, through stuff my wife and I bought, through stuff the charity bought for us. Um, and we were making basically essentially like vegetarian version of dirty rice. So, you know, gumbo seasoning, green pepper, red pepper, onion, celery, rice, tomato sauce, seasonings. And we were making, I, we were making about a hundred portions a day. Wow. And I think we did, we, we ended up doing just about 1100 portions of food from what would have probably gone to waste. And that's really what ignited my passion for it because it combined food with people. I'm like, wow, you know, everybody's got to eat. And I always felt too often that the people that have less are being served less well. And my promise was always, I would never give something for somebody else to eat that I wouldn't feed my own family. So that's kind of where that went. And, you know, it just spiraled out from there. No, I definitely appreciate you sharing those that are watching. Don't forget, check out the description, all the information's there to connect with Rob and, you know, find out more about that. I want to circle back and I want to end on learning more. Any, any tips you can share for those that are either buying, selling or investing? that are unique to you as far as when they work with Robert Seaman, this is what they're going to get. What are some tips and strategies, et cetera, that we can drop right now? Yeah. I mean, as far as expectations you could have from me, uh, the number, the two things, the two words I would say are patience and education. You know, I'm going to meet you where you're at and my focus are your needs. That's what it is. You know, 
your goals are my goals because you essentially you're hiring me to work for you. And whatever that takes is what it takes. Everyone has different questions and different, different needs and different goals. And my biggest thing is to meet people where I'm at, which is probably why my slogan is guiding you home because that's a different path for everybody. Well said, man. Well said. And lots of value. And you can tell you're a service man. Like you are into helping people. You're like to educate. And that's important. It's not just you don't have that commission breath that some have. And you're going into there to make sure that you have and do a great job for your clients. So I appreciate you spending some time today. I want to remind everyone, don't forget, reach out, connect with Robert. Definitely check out. I have my... Um, Bitly, I want to make sure that people check out. I have a little um, digital business card, what have you. Check that out. All his information is going to be in the description. And uh, again, Robert, thanks so much for being with us today. Yeah, man. Have an amazing day, Sean. Appreciate it. And everyone else, don't forget to check out all the other um, playlists that are going to be here. Don't forget to subscribe. And thanks again for your, your day, guys. Have an awesome one.